Hello everybody and uh, welcome back as usual and uh, today we're going to be looking at some um, uh, art kind of stuff well the NeoPixel with some lights um, so uh, just bear with us uh, while we wait for people in the usual way and uh, make your way to makecode.microbit.org uh, as per usual and uh, you can get ready by clicking the new project and uh, we'll be ready to go so I'm just going to wait the usual uh, 10 to 20 seconds for everybody to join. Okay, so uh, if we go to makecode.microbit.org, uh, you'll find uh, your new project ready and waiting for you as usual. If it's your first time, this will be the only one you'll see. For the rest of us, we've been doing uh, quite a few projects. And if you click that new project and go in. Now, what we're going to be looking at today is uh, a new piece of tech that can be attached to the micro bit, uh, which is a bit of fun, called a NeoPixel Strip, uh, which is a series of LED lights, light emitting diodes, and they look like this. If you go to NeoPixel, uh, they're quite fun. You can buy them in strips. Uh, if you do eventually uh, get something like this, do make sure you buy the 5 volt versions rather than the 12 volt version, and then that will work with your micro bit. And here you have, and you can see the strips. Some are just all one color, or others are rainbow uh, programmed, as you can see here. And we're going to learn how you would uh, program uh, one of those micro bits uh, with the colored lights and uh, have a bit of fun with them. And the reason why um, you might want to do that is uh, some examples here that I've got. And um, I'm on mute here, but as you press play, these are some of the things that you can do with strips program them and uh, what you can do is you see there that's quite an interesting one where you can fire things in the in the night and you can make patterns uh, quite interesting things and LEDs are sometimes used in car lights so you can see there um, some quite interesting uses and then they go back to uh, NeoPixel rings uh, that you can use lots of different examples including uh, lighting up entire boards to make loads of patterns including photographs and shapes. If you've got enough of these, um, you can actually make some quite realistic looking uh, items. And this is how big, massive boards in kind of sports complexes are made um, and lots of different ways and things that you can buy with uh, NeoPixels. So it's a good bit of fun and you can buy the simple strips and we're able today to have a look to see what those strips might look like um, on the micro bit here. Now, on the basic setup that we're used to seeing, you can't see any light uh, kind of suggestions here. And that's because like the last few days uh, that we've been doing, most of the interesting stuff comes in the advanced extensions. So if you click on the advanced and go to extensions, you may have to scroll down the page uh, to get that because it may be slightly off screen. And uh, when you click extensions, we'll see some of the usual ones that we've seen before. And there is also one here called NeoPixel. Now it's worth noting that the BitBot, which is a, a, a robot that's quite fun to have, also has these NeoPixels built into the side of them. And um, so it's quite an interesting one, as well as the servo light uh, that we looked at the other day, you can see that actually there are these uh, strips of light. So it's quite interesting. So if you can't see the NeoPixel, just type in NeoPixel into the uh, search bar there, but it should come up straight away as one of the first extensions. And you can see there's actually loads of extensions. I've even got a qubit, which we could potentially talk about. Um, but let's go to the NeoPixel and let that be added in. Now, what we've got here is that we have um, the NeoPixel block that we've seen before. Uh, sorry, we've seen them added in before. We've not seen the NeoPixel one before. And as we see that now in there, we can have a little play with it and see what it's about. So you click on the blocks and uh, some of these will need explained. We're not going to use all of them today. And we're going to go straight to the set strip. There we go. We're going to drag that in because you need to on the start. And I'm going to drag this forever just out of the way. Uh, at the start, we're going to need to set a NeoPixel strip to one of these uh, pins, which is pin zero. 
that we've connected it to and a NeoPixel strip will also need to be connected to uh, some voltage, some power and the negative, the ground at the same time. So the zero pin controls it so we can actually select multiple pins to have multiple strips uh, running at the same time. And it may not be obvious here, um, you don't have to do this, I'm just doing this to show you, that I can actually use a, a variety of pins here. So if I show you what pin 5 looks like, we've not seen this before on any other emulator, you can see actually that the tiny little uh, pieces in between the numbered pins do actually represent uh, some other pins and some other strips that we could add in. So we have explained this before a few times um, that you can have more than the pins available here of 0, 1 and 2 uh, because they are individually between uh, accessible if you have certain um, clips to put in. So let's see at the moment it's not showing anything right now and I'm just going to for the purpose of the first Oh, actually, no, we'll leave 24. It's looking quite nice. Um, so we then go back into NeoPixel, and what we can do is we can set the strip that we have to a specific color. So on start, I'm just going to drag that in and just uh, set the 24 uh, LEDs. As you can see there, it's now got 24 of these uh, devices, uh, LEDs there, because you can get the strips with multiple. So you can emulate however many that you like. Um, it's slightly limited here on how many it can show. So if I was showing four, it would then change to just the four LEDs. And if I was showing three in here, then it would actually go to the three. So while it's emulating what they look like, the number here, which I'll go back to 24 just for a bit of fun uh, in a minute, as you'll see, um, the pins that we have there represent those. Now, what we can do is there were there was a bit more of a fun option that some, some of you may have seen there. So I'm just going to drag out this uh, set strip color. And what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to go into the NeoPixel and there was show a rainbow from 1 to 360. So I'm going to stick that into there just to see what happens. And as you can see, it's got a rainbow and it starts on red and goes all the way through to red again. And that's because this is uh, dealing like a um, protractor. It's dealing like 360 degrees of the rainbow. So if you only want to show only half of a rainbow, so going from red to the blue there, which is kind of like halfway, if you typed in 180 into here, it would then give you kind of half the rainbow. Um, similarly, there you go, because it went to the blue. Similarly, if you actually wanted to go all the way around again, you could actually do two lots of 360, which would be 270 and it actually goes to, it should go through the cycle if i just add some more pins here 48 it's running out of pins to do the calculation so sometimes there is um, different things that you can do so it doesn't like to go over 360 there but that represents how many cycles that you can go through and we can do that with ranges so the more pins uh, or sorry, more leds you add the more detailed uh, this becomes. Uh, but what we're going to do today is we're just going to have a little play around with some kind of animations with colors and get into the detail uh, of what's there. So for the purpose of today I'm going to drag out the uh, fun rainbow but we're going to have some more fun with some different animations and I'm just going to stick this to four pins so it doesn't get complicated. Now what we can do is we can drag this forever because we've set the strip now to this and uh, what we could do is we can actually just uh, rotate through some colors so we can go into NeoPixel we can set the color to red and then it will just be red forever but we could then uh, do a little bit of a pause duplicate or redrag in two finger click remember if you're on a trackpad and then set it to another color blue have another there we're going to cycle now between uh, the red and the blue and you can see that they're changing the uh, time will change how quickly that that blinks as it's cycling through each of the choices and there we go and the more that you add the more interesting it becomes 
just duplicating. Don't forget to change the colours. I don't mind sticking yellow in because blue is a bit similar to, to uh, purple there. So let's stick a definitely different colour in there. And there we go. Now it's okay to change the colours around and it's kind of something you might see on a Christmas tree because this is exactly the type of thing that uh, you can do with a Christmas tree in fact is use NeoPixels to decorate it and it's a similar programming to um, any Christmas decorations you might have that flick around in colours. Um, but as you saw from the video before, just the changing of the colours isn't that interesting. What I'd like to do is kind of zip through the colours. So what was kind of more interesting as we were looking at this before wasn't the kind of random ones like that. It was when it zipped through like this, like a kind of racing one. And that that's much more interesting to me as, as a pattern. And it is personal preference. Um, so what I do here, uh, you might not um, agree with but you can change your own colors so what we're going to have a look at then is we're going to actually take all of this out and yeah we're going to take all of that out and what we're going to do is we're going to do a loop so we're going to loop round uh, some ideas so here I'm going to drag in um, that loop there. I'll just repeat that. Sorry, it was a loop and it's one we've not used before here because we've often used logic uh, or uh, we've used um, the decision makings. So here it was the four index uh, zero to four. Now we have talked about this before, but for anyone new, I'm just going to repeat this and remind it for everybody else that this looks like it's going to work with my NeoPixels because I've said four index from zero to four and I've got four LEDs so everybody's thinking that everything is okay. It is not. Just like the pins here, when we're coding we start on number zero. I know that might feel annoying but that's just the way things are when it comes to coding. So we start counting with the number zero. So actually we'll have zero, one, two, three, four. That would actually represent five numbers. So whenever we're dealing with these loops, it's always one less than the number of things that you're talking about. Again, I know that's slightly irritating, um, but that's just something you have to get used to, that uh, computers like to start with the number zero, not the number one. And it all goes down to zero and one, which represents binary, which is on and off. So, you know, just a niggle. People forget about it often, but it's just one of those things eventually you'll just get used to. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the NeoPixel and we're going to have to do something that I always forget about. And there is a, a more option that's there. And I always forget about it. Uh, and I'm always searching around for this block, but it's there when you click more. There are some uh, extra options that it can't fit onto the one screen. And uh, the one that we're after is set pixel color at and we're going to go through. Now, what we could do here, um, and I've probably missed a step, so I'm just going to show you. You don't uh, have to do what I'm doing. You just have to watch this. So I could have set uh, my strips individually here using this one, and I could have set them individually at uh, the separate colors. So if I just go to number one next and choose a different color, blue and I'll just see what happens there. I've not named them all yet um, and I also need to on my uh, NeoPixel use the show uh, command uh, to show everything that's there and you can see the pin 0 which is the first one and uh, pin 1 or, or LED 1 is blue and I could have cycled through those but it's a little bit irritating to keep uh, to keep doing them um, individually so that's why I'm going to use the loop now so the loops going to go through all these numbers from 0 1 2 and 3 rather than me having to go through each time and manually enter these values so effectively what the loop is about to show me is is this pattern okay and uh, rather than me have to keep renaming stuff individually which I could do there it is, it's going to go through that and it's done the red, blue, green 
and, and violet as I've asked it to, but the uh, loop here does that for me. It goes one, two, three for me all together. So if I drag that out, that's what I'm representing, uh, all of those numbers that go through. So I go to NeoPixel, I go to More, um, and I grab that top option out, which is Strip Set Pixel Color. And what I do is I can drag the index into here to represent it. So instead of having to go through all the numbers, it's going to say to me, right, from zero to three, I'm going to do this for you. And then on the NeoPixel, we show the strip each time. And that's what we have now. At the moment, it's just showing red and it's cycling through the pins. And you might think, what was the point of this? OK, uh, but you'll see in just a second. And then I'm going to put a pause in for an amount of time. And as we go through now, it's still doing the same thing. Now, the reason why I've done this is if I duplicate this whole strip and stick it in and change it from red to uh, orange, just the next one on the list there, you'll see now, look what's happening. We've got a lovely animation, really nice, because it's running through the cycle and then pausing by 100 uh, milliseconds, 10 of a second, uh, before it starts to go through with the oranges. So if you want to slow that down, you can make sure they're the same there, otherwise you'll end up some strange things. And there you go, we've got a much slower animation, which I don't think looks quite as nice. I think as it's zipping through, I think it looks much better. I mean, let's just see what happens when we have this. You can see that that one then goes through and then that one goes fast. So you can do that if you want different strips with different timings. I just think it works better to have them the same. And then the more of these that you add, the better that it looks. So I can stick in and try and use a variety. And notice that I'm, I'm clicking it underneath. I'm not clicking it inside. I'm clicking it underneath the next green one there. And then this time I'm going to go for a purple. And then this will run through more colors. And there we go. We've got a, a nicer option there uh, to go through. And you, you do notice we do have a black because if we did want to go through and do something similar to this, we would want that to happen. And I, I'm going to show you later how you might get something exactly like that. So you might want to set them to black. Um, otherwise, so they're off effectively. So you'll get a break. Otherwise, you'll just have a constant stream of colors, which you may want. But to get this uh, look, um, it's similar to that. Now notice each one is slightly more faded than the last, and we could program that in um, using the NeoPixel and using the uh, saturation or the luminosity, or if you go into brightness, probably more easily that, that option there. So you can have ease the brightness, and we could go into that uh, and talk more at length, but uh, we're getting a bit too fine in detail. I'd like to show you something else, uh, which is slightly more interesting. Uh, next. So by all means, um, have a play with the brightness um, because you could actually just say, do you know what? I'm going to stick that in there. Let's have the purple full brightness. It's 255. I might show you why that is in a minute. And I'm going to rip these straight out and then I'm going to duplicate each of those blocks again using exactly the same purple. But each time right at the bottom, reducing that brightness. So I'm going to go to 150 next and maybe just 50 to give me uh, what should be a slightly less bright one each time. Now, I think that this uh, emulator does struggle to show me um, the brightness changes because it's not a perfect emulator, but that's how you would uh, do that kind of strip through reducing the brightness on each of the fades through. So we've got this kind of idea, which is quite interesting, but I want to do something a bit more um, random and a bit more um, interesting as far as a bit of, bit of uh, programming goes. So what we're going to do now is uh, I'm just going to take this entire block out. If you want to keep this, uh, just go home, press home, uh, save it and open a new one. Um, otherwise, 
can uh, just carry on and do exactly what I'm doing. So I'm just going to rip out um, all those blocks. There we go. I'm going to still um, keep the four pins. You can add as many as you want. It doesn't really matter at the moment. But what I'm going to do is I would like it to cycle through um, some uh, different colors uh, a little bit more interestingly, maybe a little bit more randomly. Um, so to do that, uh, we're going to have to think a little bit more creatively. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into the NeoPixel and we're going to go uh, to the show color. And we're just going to go into this one uh, in from the basic straight off on the NeoPixel. And we're going to drag this one in. However, we've got this show color to red. There is something that we could do with the NeoPixel. I'm going to drag that in and I'm going to go to more and I'm going to grab this red, green, blue uh, pill looking shape and drag it in to replace the red. So I got that from the more section and it was red, green, blue. What you may not be aware is that the very screen that you're looking at right now is made up of individual pixels, um, little squares made up of uh, red, green and blue uh, lights, LEDs. It's exactly what uh, or how a TV works. Um, it's a bit difficult to see on modern day uh, computers because uh, especially if you're on an iPhone with uh, what they would call retina display because they uh, so fine the pixels that you can't really see them. But zoomed in, this is what you would see okay, on a TV screen. You'd have your red, your green and your blue color. And if we want to see the color white, which is exactly what this is actually showing, I know it doesn't look like it, but white is all the colors activated at the same time. And black is none of the colors activated at the same time. Uh, as you can see here, um, that when the pixels are all switched off, that gives you your black. Now I don't, I know that you don't think that uh, the red, green, blue there uh, all together is is white um, but you just have to believe as you step back from that um, it does uh, it does meld into it so all the colors that you're seeing and that you're used to seeing are a combination of those and a demonstration of that is here and there is uh, an experiment you may have seen at school or may not have when all the colors are combined you end up with white I know it seems uh, like the opposite of what it should be uh, but it's not. It's not like mixing paint. Paint mixes very, very differently and all the colors are black. Um, and if you do red and uh, uh, a blue there, you get this kind of uh, violet color. So you get different mixes. So I won't go too much into the detail of that now, um, other than that's how we measure it. Now for other computer reasons, um, as the brightness before, we usually deal with 256 numbers when we deal with computer programming. Uh, there are reasons be behind that with binary that I won't go into now with eight bits of data. And you're saying to me, you've just said 256, why am I seeing 255 on the screen? And the reason for that is, hopefully some people are screaming at the screen to say, because zero is counted. We always start with zero, so that represents 256 values because zero is one of them. Also, if you're not sure how to mix your colors, we can check here. There are plenty of RGB, red, green, blue color charts like this one, and you can drag your color around to see what combination of uh, red, green, and blue you need to grab these colors. Now, quite obviously this green, you would hope had more green than anything else because it's a green color. If you get into the blues, obviously blue is going to be heavier, but there are combinations of your red, your green and your blue. So if we wanted to get this exact blue right the way up there and just move it slightly higher, I think, because we're just not quite getting into the reds there because I've not gone quite into the proper blues. There we go. The proper blue blue would be zero red, zero green and all the blues. So if we went to our code zero, zero and on the blue, and then don't forget on your NeoPixel to uh, select the uh, strip show 
well it does already say sorry it already shows the uh, the color that would represent your uh, blue color and then different combinations play around with them will give you uh, different color values the more blue you have obviously the more blue it's going to be and you just have to look at the shades of color that go with that so next uh, what we're going to have a look at here is what could we do to make this a bit more random well we could use the random number picker and we could go in and we could uh, don't do this because I'm going to show you a, well actually let, let's do it slightly we'll do it slightly slower but uh, I'll just show you something quickly don't do this because it's not the best way of doing it you could just stick in a random number generator in here between 255 and 0 and then duplicate that for all of these. Now I'm going to show you a better way of doing this so you don't have to do it. But if we did that, oh, just came out there, didn't it? It's going to undo. Just missed it slightly. There we go. And what that will do is uh, it will just show uh, random numbers or random colors forever, which is kind of okay. But And you could slow it down with a, a basic uh, pause. It's going quite quick at the moment and you could slow it down further with even longer pauses and it's cycling through some random colors which, which is okay but I kind of want to get a flowing more natural kind of change of color than just random things in your face so what I'm going to do is uh, hopefully you listened to me and didn't do the random color pickers but if you did just drag them out again uh, what we're going to do is we're going to um, deliberately um, change what these color values are so what we're going to do is we're going to create some variables we're going to go in and we're going to do set oh sorry we're going to make a variable first sorry we're going to make a variable called red I'll press ok and then I'm going to drag that set red into here and I'm going to set the red value to zero I'm then going to go into my variables. I'm going to create a new variable called blue. And if you can't even be bothered to do that, you could just do R, G, and B. And I'm going to do another one, green. So I've got red, blue, and green. And what I can do is in my variable, I can drag out the set. I don't actually have to because I can duplicate them. I'm just going to drag this forever down a bit because it's getting in the way. Red green and blue there we go now I've got my red green and blue to zero but it's still showing this kind of pale green color because it's still showing red 34 green 78 and blue 56 so I go to my variables and I drag in red to go in red make sure you match these up variables green to go in green and blue to go in blue on my variables numbers that change and there we go oh, again if it slips in the wrong place just press the undo button or the, at the bottom there or uh, command or control uh, Z and I'll just drag that out did I miss it and it was the blue one there we go be more careful this time and there we go and then this time this should show me a uh, kind of white color the best it gives me is this um sorry black because it's uh, off off and off and it represents black unfortunately with these uh kind of gray looking like off symbols it's, it's uh, i wish it would actually show the true black and just to show you if i did 255 255 and 255 which is the maximum values that we should give red green and blue and it does the similar kind of thing and it does represent the white but if um i said the emulator is not perfect if we stick in random values into here then that's what we get the kind of more greeny color because green's taking over but again that's not really doing anything uh, very good so what I'm going to do forever is I'm going to go to my variables and I'm going to change the value of green uh, duplicate and duplicate three times and at the moment they all say green but I'm going to go red, green, blue. And I'm going to change it by one each time. I'm going to speed it up 
to only five milliseconds and we're going to start to see that this will cycle through some colors uh, as we go through and then it's immediately jumping to some other colors and I'll explain why that is in a minute and it's not looking absolutely fantastic at the moment if I'm being honest and that's because we're changing it by small amounts and we started off at random values so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at zero zero and zero and I'm going to stick these to five five and five so we're going to see more of a change more quickly because the values are, are scrolling up faster so if we uh, watch uh, what's going on here uh, we've got the red the green and the blue all changing and we've got that and eventually we'll have a see what goes on I'm just going to actually change that to 100 again just because I think the uh, emulator is struggling to uh, deal with those values and what we're seeing is the reason why we're not changing is because it starts at 0 0 0 and then it goes 5 5 5 and what we're seeing is the same value for red, for green, and for blue all the time. And what we found out is the same value for red, green, and the blue is equal amounts of the same color, which gives you white. So really, we wanted to start at different locations. I know I'm getting a bit techy, but we always do towards the end here. So here you can see now, by starting off at 0, 50, and 100, I was getting more random changes here. Blue then it goes to fades kind of out, then it goes to this bright yellow, but you can play around with the changes. So maybe it was a, a hundred and maybe 200. There we go. And there we are, we're starting to go through. Now we do have a little bit of a problem and that's because I keep changing my value by five. So when they go up to the blue one, and it kind of runs out of uh, values at 255, it's gonna to go to 260, which doesn't exist. And we could start to add in, I'm not gonna do that now, but we could start to go in uh, a kind of loop as it goes around um, every now and again. So we could actually say, once you get to 255, if you're greater, we could use a logic. If you're greater than that value, then go back to zero. And that's how you would get this constant change of rainbows. So I know that that last bit got uh, a little bit um, obscure, but hopefully some people were following that. But you could just go in and if you want to just say to yourself, Do you know what, I'm going to uh, have these values and I'm not even going to bother with that. And we can just go straight in as we did before using the maths random color, which I think potentially is the most simple way of doing it so we don't use the variables anymore boot them out and then it will just keep looping around and you can change the value 255 probably should have done that first and then duplicate it to save myself some typing and then we'll end up with a more interesting kind of color as we go through here grab in the basic change to just slow that down a little bit and then you've got your random uh, colors and you could play around with some maths to get that a little bit more interesting slow it down speed it up but I'd still think that of all the things we've done uh, getting that one with the uh, loops is possibly the more uh, interesting of all the values um, rather than just uh, picking it out but now you've seen how to use colors you know you could investigate uh, as we saw uh, earlier how to do uh, more interesting examples of how to use LEDs and uh, I think the one that was quite interesting was when you have real pictures of people. So that was one like that. And there's some eyes that were going on there. And uh, I do have somebody that I follow on uh, Twitter that actually has made uh, an LED cube um, for making a snake game um, in three dimensions. And you can make these interesting ones. She's made it with ping pong balls. I uh, can't quite get the uh, the feed up yet, but it's this kind of um, interesting concept where you can actually start to program individual cubes with lots of different lights uh, to make more interesting three, uh, 3D 
or uh, physical uh, versions of this. So LED is very interesting. Have a little play with uh, the NeoPixel. Uh, they pop up in lots of different things. And remember that you can pick them up for a few pounds um, online if you if you do want to add them in and they come in rolls and you can un un uh, undo them all. And if you do have a micro bit, you can start to program them to do exactly what we've shown you today. So quite interesting. I hope you find and uh, hopefully see you tomorrow. Bye bye.